Hyenas. Hogger. Ardwool. Laughing Doggos. Regular. Irregular. Striped. Spotted. Withered. Bruce. Let's talk about gnolls. <laughs> Gnolls in the D&D universe have been around since first edition, with the sole intent of being hellhounds in human form. Being one of the many monstrous humanoids, these eight-foot-tall bipedal hyenas uh, range in color from a dull blue to a nice mellow gold. Could you imagine, like, a shaggy gnoll? Or, like, a Pomeranian gnoll? Instead of the dreadful baying and haunting laughter coming from the burning village as you approach, you see the burning embers of eyes in the distance, followed by a very high-pitched, incessant yipping. Yapping? Do little dogs yip or yap? Or do they book both? Is that different things? I've never owned a small dog. Back to hyenas. Following this methodology, gnolls were designed to strike fear into players in a way that wolves and other more beastly humanoids wouldn't. Whereas dire wolves and wargs are feral and cunning, gnolls are known more for their bloodlust and their thirst for carnage. They willingly embrace their feral natures with the intent of satiating their hunger. A hunger that their demonic gods never want to be able to be satiated. That right there is pretty metal for any character motivation. Gnoll attacks and raids are part of the life for the commoners in the D&D universe. While not as tactful as lizard folk or mischievous as goblins, the gnolls are a very real threat that could leave an unprotected town completely in shambles. It's very important for low-level D&D players to realize that these somewhat unintelligible creatures could indeed overwhelm a city guard and burn the place down for really no other reason than want to eat your face. But it's a good lesson to learn early on, specifically because they almost obsess about death. They're willing to eat anything that was once living or even go beyond the scope of most races that are willing to participate in both cannibalism and necromancy on a social level. It doesn't get much more metal than that, mixing in the glowing red eyes and their innate predatory skills. And you have some of the scariest humanoids you might run into at night until you hit that weird tentacle on the face part of the monster manual. They aren't really prone to war, like some of the other monstrous races like hobgoblins and orcs, but they love to fight and quite often feed into their natural bloodthirsty tendencies. That being said, they do have a very strong pack mentality, spending most of their efforts reading and... <laughs> reading? I have a suspicion that gnolls probably don't read very often, and if they do, it's like a Pinterest post or a, an Etsy page about how to turn your enemy's faces into a bag or finger bones into a necklace. They spend most of their time raiding, World of Warcraft style. Raiding and capturing slaves instead of farming and crafting like other races. Backbond defines most of their society, and finding surrogate packs in my mind makes them a great idea for party members. Though they tend to be chaotic evil, I think you can have a half-cocked cannibalistic party member without having a gnoll in your party, so you might as well pick up one that uses nunchucks. Have I talked about gnolls being proficient with nunchucks? Some of them are, at least. Gnolls are a monster race at heart, and... And it's really easy to compare them to hyenas because they look and act, sound, and, and assume smell like one. And it always kind of weirded me out that they also befriend hyenas. I mean, they befriend most scavenger-raced creatures, and it's not uncommon to find them with gnolls. It's kind of like a centaur raising horses. Seems a little off to me. Let's talk about stats for a little bit. If you're going to roll a gnoll, roll a gnoll. Awesome. I would definitely focus on their bloodlust or their hunting ability over, say, their ability to speak common at the beginning of the game. There's a better chance of an actual hyena knowing common than a gnoll knowing common at the beginning of the game. They're monsters with a really low int score. I definitely think you should do this if you play them. It can make the game really interesting. They only know gnoll. Only no, only no gnoll. Yep. That being said, bonuses to strength and dexterity? Maybe not both. They generally are pretty large creatures when it comes to a medium-sized creature, seven to eight feet tall, upwards of 300 pounds. You could bend them into a large-sized creature. I don't know if you'd bend them, but you really could go either way. A large, medium-sized, or a small, large-sized creature. Yep, that makes total sense in my head. If you're going for the bonus dexterity as well, because of their affinity for whips and spears, I would argue that you should probably take a negative level to intelligence. I know, a negative level, but why? That doesn't seem cool. I mean, look at the hyena argument above. <clears throat> Wait, you can't see the script. I guess it's earlier, or behind, or forementioned? When it comes to most iterations of gnolls, their abilities are kind of bleak. They attack regularly in packs and usually have some form of pounce, charge, or damage boost. Something like power attack or a bonus bite attack. And I really like the 5th edition ability, Rampage, which states that as a gnoll is reduced to zero, they immediately take a movement up to half their speed and get one last frenzied attack. That's a really cool idea. It kind of sucks that you basically have to die to use it, but I think it's a good starting place. You could go the Flynn route. Flying? Flynn. I think that's right. Let me look this up. Like Gone with the Wind or Wind Like a Car. Do people still wind cars or do they just change the batteries now? Flind. That's not right. Flynn are slightly different racial variants of gnolls. And for some reason, they're proficient with a very oddly specific weapon called a flind bar. <clears throat> 
flindbar. Let's say flindbar, which is basically a mixture of a steel cudgel and a flail, which depending on how you look at it, could mean it's either metal nunchucks or like a camping tent. Pole. Those exist, look them up. Really, I think the focus for gnolls should be on their pack attacks. In Pathfinder, there's a feat that allows the pack of gnolls to make a single five foot step after an attack if they are already if they even if they've already moved around and that's kind of a moot point in fifth edition but similarly to a pounce attack letting them dodge in and out of combat if attacking with a pack could be a really cool maneuver you could take something from the hyena playbook which is pack tactics and if you're adjacent to somebody that gives you advantage something similar to the sentinel feat would be a really cool boon for pretty much any knoll or their party members i would suggest either after a successful attack they could cancel an attack of opportunity once per short rest or possibly just not provoke attacks of opportunity on a creature they just successfully hit lots of options to play with but that's kind of where my mind's at Aside from that, dolls are pretty simple beings. They're meant for really low monster level encounters. I love using them to strike fear in low level adventures, and as creatures, they absolutely do that. They have this really unique relationship with death. Not only will they eat anything they find laying around, be it human or other gnolls, they'll even go as far as saving the bones of fallen gnolls to do a ritual called the withering. This is specifically tied to worshippers of, um, e Ino Inogu? Oh boy, there's a name for you. It looks like someone took the word yeet and the word donut and tried to proceed to convince their younger brother that they are spelt the same. Yinogu has many names like Lord of Savagery, Beast of Butchery, Ruler of Ruin, Destroyer, or simply the Knoll Lord, because the other ones were a little too pretentious to some crowds. But Yeet Donut is basically credited for creating the gnolls as a race, as well as granting them unsatiable bloodlust. And in return, the gnolls worship it. Because of this, to the gnolls, satiating your bloodlust or attempting to is a type of worship. Gnolls are scary. What the hell was I talking about? Oh, the withering. Turning your buddies into a skeleton 101. Gnolls will take the bones of their fallen pack mates and resurrect them as skeletons or undead gnolls. Or the withered gnolls. To continue with servitude to the demonic masters. Somewhere I read that gnolls really like this because it basically makes their warbands bigger and decreases the number of mouths they have to feed. Did I mention that they clean the bones before they raise them? I have the little air quotes there. Maybe you didn't see that because it's an audio medium. Playing a withered gnoll is also an option for players that really want to be either a undead or have the option to turn their friends undead. Maybe you betray a party member that dies and you can just always revive them with their bones later. Continuing on with the adventure. Not to mention you get a nice meal. Gross. All things aside, gnolls are built for combat. They live and revel in it, and I think they would fit really well into any party as a frontliner, and that really goes for any class. You could choose the obvious route and build out a gnoll nunchaku barbarian with his huge frame and the bonus trip attacks, or you could build out a ranger that specializes in tracking down and eliminating enemies one-on-one. -on -one. If you really want to embrace the shadows, you could always go the cleric route and start raising an army of skeletal buddies to backpack around the countryside with you. It doesn't mean you can't build out a really cool sorceress or wizard that's trying to learn more about the world and finding their way in their new pack. Or if it really strikes your fancy, you could always sell your soul to Captain Eat Donut Man No God and start warlocking your way into history. Did I mention gnolls are pretty metal? So are their nunchucks. Which is called a flindabar. Maybe I will play a pom-pom gnoll. At least that way the worst thing they do is scoot their butt across the carpet. Just avoid eating your party members completely. I think that's really what I'm trying to get out of this. Thanks again for watching. We've been doing a lot of fun stuff in the Discord lately. I've been live streaming some of the art sessions as well as doing uh, shared drawing sessions with Patreon members. If you haven't joined the Discord yet or you just realized you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do either of those things. Check us out. As always, you can download the artwork from these videos or from the live streams to use in your own D&D campaigns. I would love to see how you use them. If you do, please share. If you've ever played a gnoll, you have a really cool gnoll story, drop it down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and remember to keep your dice on the tape. And always make sure you outlive your gnoll party members. If you see your gnoll cleric licking his lips, don't trust the heal spell. It might be seasoning. Why do all these healing potions taste like garlic? I don't feel any better. No, but you taste better. <laughs> <laughs>